Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Pastoral Thoughts Podcast. This is your host, Jack Young. And today, Friday, it is June. What date is it? 13th? I think so. Something like that. Yeah. No, it's the 10th. I think if my watch is correct, and I got an old fashioned watch on today. No, I think it's the time. But uh, yeah. Pastor Craig is here again, and uh, we uh, we use the podcast as an excuse to get out of a graduation party. So <laughs> that's a that's a blessing. And no hot dogs, so you know, yeah, that's the point. So he had a cupcake <laughs> and uh, coffee, so he should be all wired up and uh, ready to be on the podcast. Yep. And uh, we hope to be a blessing today. We're going to talk about. Um, just uh, well, Pastor Craig has been in the ministry for many, many years, but here in this leg of his ministry, he's been an uh, interim pastor and filled in at a lot of churches who are, are without a pastor. So we're going to talk of just uh, try to be a help uh, to laymen and then also pastors and things out there in regards to calling a pastor, the interim period between pastor and pastor. Perhaps we'll talk a little bit about pulpit committee, uh, things like that, and just I- ideas, things to be aware of. Um, you know, and, and things along this nature. Amen. Where do you, where should we start? Pastor? Well, I guess for those that don't know, I've pastored for over 42 years. I've, uh, been preaching for 50. I grew up in a church, so I'm not ignorant, you know, in the sense of what churches are all about. Mm-hmm. I've watched a lot of things, a lot of good things, a lot of not so good things. And I've come to some conclusions. Um, uh, probably a lot of them are, uh, pretty normal. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't have any real revolutionary ideas. Yeah. But there are some just common yeah. sense things. And, you, I and think you've been important. able to experience this uh, from all the different angles. Yes, yes. And uh, mm-hmm. I have too. So I've I've been, you know, like you, I've been a, I've been a layman. I've been a church member. Um, I've been in churches where the pastor has changed. And then, you know, now I am a pastor and I'm pastor two different churches and, uh, I've been on pulpit committee. You know, I, I was an interim pastor for one year when I was 27 years old. And, um, and so, yeah, you get to see these things from all the different perspectives. Right. right. So that I think there's biblical principles and there's not one size fits all, obviously. I've not, I've not actually been an official interim pastor. But I've pastored or helped churches a year at a pop, mm-hmm. you know. So I guess in a way I was. It yeah, just you, wasn't you were official. there. You were their shepherd, but it was right. never voted on or right. labeled. Internal. Trying to trying to give yeah. them. I have come up with a, a, a kind of a basic contract mm-hmm. as an interim pastor. Yeah, I know that's a bad word for Baptist, but yeah, I think for an interim situation, protect I think the, the church is a good thing, and then also protect the interim. Right, and everybody knows you know where you're coming from and. Mm-hmm. It's open ended, so either party could uh, terminate it at any right. time. Uh, but as far as even reimbursement or what's expected, mm-hmm. you can't expect an interim pastor, especially if the guy's working a job, <clears throat> you know, to be in the office every day mm-hmm. and those kind of things. Uh, and if he's driving a distance, you know, you can't expect that. But maybe one day a week plus Sundays and a Wednesday night, yeah, that kind of thing. And then be available for funerals and possibly weddings. Those kind of things, counseling. Yeah, that'd um, be great. And, 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 and you have uh, some men in your your church. I'm thinking of yourself and Dan Smith. We got Dan, Tom mm-hmm. Styles in our yes. church, and uh, you guys are you know now in your 70s. And there's no retirement when you're in the ministry, right. but your ministry sometimes changes, and so a lot of times you're in a a, a fatherly role with right. churches, and that, right. that's what I you know. I would recommend for a church is somebody who could be like a father type figure. Now I was 27. But I was already at the church at the time that I was interim at, and I was working for my dad. And so he left, and he took the church in New York. And uh, so it was one year before we called a pastor. And um, <laughs> I worked really hard. I, I, you know, Lord blessed. And we, we actually added families in that year. Sure. And, uh, and it was an exciting time period in my life. I knew in my heart, the church had asked me several times to, to be the pastor. Mm-hmm. I knew I was given like 120%. You, you know, I, I felt burnt. I had a twitch in my eye. Yeah. And I knew, uh, and I, you know, I worked, I was doing all the preaching, a good sized church, almost as big as the church here. And, um, 
uh, you know, I was given a burning candle both ends. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had a twitch in my eye right here, and I knew that as <laughs> soon as they voted in the new pastor, that twi I would, would stop twitching, <laughs> and I was right. Yeah, amen. <laughs> it did. <laughs> I could always, it was so annoying all the time. I could feel it. You couldn't see it, but it was a muscle in there. It was some nervous yeah. muscle. You know, in, in between pastors, it's probably a very, very, well, no, probably about it. It was a very tense time. Yeah. Uh, because whoever's the leader, if it's a, you know, a, a deacon, uh, or the chairman of a pulpit committee or whatever, it's like he's got gray pants and a blue coat. Everybody's mm -hmm. going to shoot at him. And yes. how come you're not doing it faster? How come, you know, you're not doing this? Or, you know, why didn't we do this? We always do that or whatever it is. And it's like almost a no-win situation for the guy. Yes. And, it, and churches need to be really careful uh, to be gracious to whoever steps the search, up to the, the plate. search committee, the pulpit committee. Right, you know, and, and, and be gracious to them. It ought to be a godly time for church too, you know. I, yes. When I was, I took my first church. I was a senior pastor, age twenty three, full time. Well, we pretended it was full time. Okay, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I think I had eight bucks left over every week sure. after I had paid my bills. Uh, but you know, we had a new family come to our church. They were a great family. Their name was Sailors, and they were a member of a denominational church on the west side of the city, and they came to our church. And I said, "Well, you know, why did you leave your church?" Well, our pastor left, and and uh, I said, "Why don't he was a deacon?" Mm -hmm. He said, "Why don't we need to get together, have an all night prayer meeting, and ask God to show me, show us who should be our pastor?" And he said, "One of the women stood up and said, we don't need to have an all night prayer meeting. We've got a computer at headquarters, so oh we we'll just check the computer and see who's available." And uh, you know. It, this our ministry is a spiritual ministry. That's right. Not a worldly ministry. Yeah. We we were talking before you got started, and you know, in Acts chapter number twenty, Paul is bidding farewell there in Ephesus, and he um he says that after my departure, so he was their shepherd there, he was watching over their souls, and he says, After my departure shall grievous wolves enter in. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a good <laughs> shepherd, a good under shepherd, um, over a church and that good under shepherd leaves the um, idea of wolves springing up and the opportunity there, the yep. shepherd is gone and now wolves can reveal themselves and they can go after sheep. Uh, and so th there, so there is a danger when there's between pastors spiritually. And so a church ought to be aware of that. And that's why I think also they should seek out a godly interim pastor mm -hmm. and uh, maybe vote one in from their own congregation, just an interim. Mm -hmm. And then, um, or however one would be appointed by the deacons or whatever, and have one shepherd uh, leading that flock, or a godly retired pastor in the community, yep. something like that. And um, you definitely want some godly retired pastors overseeing and giving counsel to your church during that time. You I, have to have shepherds. That's that's a real good idea. One thing that has shocked me, and, and by the way, the reason I got into doing what I'm doing uh, was in 2000, I think, 17, uh, 11, 12, 16, 17, I had back surgery and uh, I knew I'd be off my legs for about a year. Mm -hmm. So I resigned the church. I didn't think it was fair for the church to, you know, basically have a man on the payroll, so to speak, that couldn't minister. Could, yes. Yeah. So I, I resigned the church and we joined Buckley Road Baptist Church. And as soon as I could sit on a stool, my phone started ringing and, and uh, I preached almost every weekend, you know, yeah. since then, somewhere, yeah. you know, Praise the Lord. I've yeah. helped four churches where the pastors died. Yeah. One where the pastor and wife died. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then three others during that period of time. Yeah. That's awesome. And the thing is, you know, when a church doesn't have leadership, mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 there's always going to be friction. Yeah. There's always going to be problems. And, and I, I'll say this too, like for those, for those listening out there who don't know who Pastor Craig is, because I know I have people listening from across the country and uh, praise the Lord for you, is um, that he built an amazing church over here, not too far from my church, about 15 miles away. And I grew up near to their church and uh, he is always highly regarded, you know, and he's pastored for, you know, four decades plus. So in the state of New York, you know, he's looked at as a mentor, as a model, you know, as a shepherd, well, and then, then he's that. like a father type, yeah, father type figure uh, to, um, you know, a lot of the churches out there. So as soon as you were laid up, people heard you're available, you know, you were ministering all over to the different churches in it, the state. It still surprises me when the phone rings, but, you know, I'm busy all the time, seems yeah. like. 
and uh, and different situations. But you know, you can have somebody from within, like you said, but they still may not have the experience of a man who's pastored thirty years somewhere. Absolutely, and has a good reputation. Absolutely. You know, besides, and that's why I think it it is good to find somebody, not necessarily me, but somebody that's been around. To kind of hold the reins until yeah, they so can get you, somebody. So I would say if you have a pulpit committee or the deacons choose the next pastor or whatever, I would bring in uh, to your council at least and, and uh, have deacons meetings or pulpit committee meetings with godly local pastors and yep. let them counsel you. Yes. And also let them be a part of the vetting process. Not like they would vote yay or nay on the candidate, but they'd say, I would not do that guy or whatever. Um, and I'll, I'll give you, for instance, uh, when I was an interim pastor in Michigan, I'll tell you an interest. This is an interesting story. And we're talking about wolves. And here's the thing with wolves in the ministry, you have access to people, uh, in religious circles. And so if you're a wolf, um, you're going to hang around a church Mm -hmm. because there's access to sheep (laughs) and, um, you see a shepherd feeds from the, you know, he feeds, he's a sheep as well. He's mm-hmm. also eating God's word, and then he's feeding people God's word. Right. But a wolf, true wolf is going to feed off a sheep, and so it's emotional, or well, you know, body, soul, and spirit, or spirit, soul, and body. So it's a, the spiritual feeding. They're going to eat eat peop, uh, spiritually, the people, and then also emotionally, going to drain them emotionally, and then sometimes they do it physically, and they you know they go to jail mm-hmm. for it sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know these yeah. wolves. Yeah, and 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 they they'll always show their true colors, but it may take years. Yeah, and it may do irreparable damage. And it's wolves in sheep's to the clothing, so you right. have to see through right. the sheep's clothing to see the wolf. A, a wolf will not often show itself. Right, himself. No, for he's, g- he's going to disguise himself as a sheep. Yeah, so it could be a member of a church, or it could be a you know a pastor looking for a church. And the other, pro, the other, well, Jesus gave the two illustrations. The other one is the tear in the weeds. Right. The tear in the wheat. Right. Looks the same. And, and it like grows the together. There's a period of time you're fooled. And, uh, and a fellow called me one time and he said, you know, Harold Camping said something. <laughs> uh-huh. And I think, you know, I said, well, you know, I'm not really a big fan of, you know, Harold. And, and he was and the guy who was on the radio. Date setting and, and all yeah, that he, business. Yeah. But he said, he said that we as Christian leaders should not be, should not beat ourselves up too much when we're fooled by a wolf uh, mm-hmm. in sheep's clothing because that's the whole idea. They are right. disguised. They are disguised. Mm-hmm. You know. So I, I really prayed in that a lot. Yeah. And I well, said, I said, Lord, the one determiner of a false prophet and a wolf in sheep's clothing. Jesus tells us it says, "By their fruits, right, ye shall know them." Right. It's not even by their doctrine. Well, one that's, because that's, a, a wolf will, yeah, will yeah, clothe yeah, himself in good right. doctrine. The doctrine might be spot on. Right. Uh, a wolf. A wolf, you can tell a wolf because he'll bite you. Yeah. And when there's somebody always sniping and biting yeah. people, other yeah. Christians, criticizing that. Not blessing that's them. Kind of a, yeah, yeah, it's kind of a sign. Yeah. But I asked God, I said, you know, there's got to be a way that we can discern a sheep from a wolf and a tear from mm-hmm. wheat. And God gave me this. And in Romans 8 9, and 9, and for years, I preached this verse correctly, but... I think every Christian that's walked with God and, and has read their Bible for any length of time will tell you they'll see a verse, and there'll be something in that verse they hadn't see, er, right. had never I, seen. Right. Absolutely. And that's the way this was with me. It says in Romans 8, 9, But you're not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be it, the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, every believer has the Spirit of God. We're mm-hmm. all baptized by one Spirit into one body. And then it says, Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Mm-hmm. So I've always taught that verse, that if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're not saved. When you get saved, you get the Holy Spirit, right, dwelling in your body. Uh But it doesn't say the Holy Spirit. It says the Spirit of Christ. Now, I think that is the Holy Spirit, Mm -hmm. but it's a different take on the personage of the Holy Spirit. Sure. And it's a Spirit of Christ Christ in you. Yeah, so I said to myself, well, what's the Spirit of Christ? And that's mentioned a lot, of, a lot in the New Testament, actually, more than I had, had figured. It's quite a study. But the Lord took me back to Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. Uh, let's see, Luke chapter 4, verse number 18. And, and we're told what the Spirit of Christ is. Jesus is speaking, and this is, comes from Isaiah chapter 11. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Mm-hmm. So now we've got the Spirit of Christ, right? And it says, because. So there's a reason. 
He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. A wolf generally will look down on the poor. Uh, he won't go after the poor as a pastor. Mm-hmm. Uh, he wants to go after the rich people, glamorous people, whatever. Uh, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Uh, a a uh, pastor, uh, an honest, true pastor, will have a broken heart for those that are broken hearted. Right. And, and a wolf and a won't wolf care. Won't, a wolf will bite him. Yeah. Well, you know, you you're going through those troubles because you weren't walking with God, yeah. or you know, yeah. God's judging you, or whatever it might be. Yeah. And, and there's no broken hearted heartedness to preach uh, the deliverance to the captives. So there's people in all kind of bondage. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not sure exactly how you want to interpret these phrases, but there are a lot of people yeah. out there in bondage. Absolutely. Uh, even you know, I've done some jail ministry. And there are a lot of people captive today that really do have a hunger for things of God. Yeah. And, I mean, we we get this idea of people in prison as being tough, rough, you know, but that's not necessarily the case. Uh, The recovering of sight to the blind, you know, open our eyes. I got to say this. We have this, quote, unquote, woke generation. They're Mm -hmm. not woke. They're asleep. Mm -hmm. They're asleep. They're dead in sin. Mm -hmm. And they're not woke at all. Uh, to set at liberty them that are bruised. They're, hey, how many people have been bruised in our ministries Right by wolves? Say, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. They're going to look for the coming of Christ. And then I want the first John, and any of your listeners, I really challenge you this, because I, I never hear anybody of our stripe preach this. And you go to first John, and it clearly says, if you don't love the brother and you're not saved. Right. Yes. So a wolf yeah, yeah. won't d- two, demonst- right. I know the verse, like verse four or something. Yeah, and it's all through First John that oh, same yeah. idea. Well, if you, yeah, you know, of, of loving. Uh, if you say others. you love God and hate your brother, and that's talking about right. brother believer, right? And um, I always say this: if you say you love Christ the head, but you don't love His body, the yeah, church, that's true, you're lying. Yep. yep. I love this head, but I don't yep. love His body. Yep. Yeah. So a uh, a uh, 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 sheep. Will demonstrate love for the brethren. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I remember listening to, uh, oh, I think it was Moody Bible Institute broadcast, but it was uh, they were talking about Harry, Harry Ironside, mm-hmm. and I'm not I'm not saying I 100 percent agree with this, but but it's the spirit of, of what I'm going to say. A lady came forward and she said, "I'd like to join a church," and he said, "Are you saved? Are you born again?" She said, "Well, I know I really love the brethren." He accepted her in that because that's wow. what the Bible wow. says. You yeah, that, yeah, that's neat. And and there's got to be a love for the brother. And a pastor, who it's all about himself, mm-hmm. uh, it, it, narcissistic. Par- I know pastors that uh, they think the whole world revolves around them. Yeah. And you know the United Methodists are doing are giving psychological exams at ordination co- meetings. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah, not. No, no, I've heard that before. Yeah, I'm not saying yeah. they're our example, and I'm not saying yeah. we should do that. But sometimes I think it wouldn't Th- be a there's bad a idea. There's a really good book. It's called When. When narcissism goes to church, and I recommend it to everybody, go on eBay and get it. You get it for like five bucks, free shipping, and it's phenomenal. Every pastor should read that. I'd like to. What's the name? Um, when when narcissism goes to church, I'll give it to you. I'd Just like, remind yeah. me when the podcast okay. is done. Yeah, yeah I, like, I read I like it. I took notes yeah. on it. Yeah, um, there's he, an, another extremist parent. And, and so again, yeah. um, he argues in that book. The guy who wrote it is that um, narcissists or wolves are attracted to churches. Like, for instance, he gives an example that to get up in front of people and speak or probably even have a podcast, Mm -hmm. like (laughs) public speaking is people's biggest fear more than death. Right. They would rather die than get up and speak in public. That's true. And so you and I chose to stand up three to four times a week Mm -hmm. in front of people and hear the sound of our own voice. I'll speak six times. And and so the motivation is either... Um, you're doing it out of love for Christ and uh, love for his word and love for the sheep. Yeah. And that drives you to go past yourself and to speak right. or else you love to hear yourself talk. Mm-hmm. You're the center of the world. Right. People need to come to your opinion. People need to be more like you. Um, that also yep. is drawn, that narcissistic spirit. And a pulpit committee needs to be on top of that. Yeah. And, 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 and so that's where they need I to, had the ultimate illustration yeah. when we're okay. done talking with this that cap it off. You ready for it? Then sure. we'll go on to something well, else. I, I'm just, yeah, I was just yeah. going to say that. Well, well, go ahead. Go ahead. 
Okay, so here's yeah. my story. Then, then yeah. you can think about okay. what, you, what you're going to say. Um, so when I was in Michigan, there was this guy that was highly recommended for the church. Uh, the church was a great church. You could take care of the pastor. I was. Uh, I would have been the full time assistant. I was. I was trying to move at then, but full time. You know. You know. Full time secretary mm-hmm. stuff like that. So it's a big church, and so it'd be a desired church. And so there is this guy that he got an honorary doctorate. I won't say from what college. Um, same year as my dad did. You know, getting closer <laughs> to the hints out there. Sure. Sure. And uh, so that's the first time we met this guy. And so he had a fast growing church in um in a state and um and so I uh found so we we had him in. Oh, he was recommended by the guy who pastors the biggest independent Baptist church in the country, who's now in prison, by the way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then also he was he was recommended <clears throat> by Mark Rasmussen, who is down at West Coast and he's he loves the Lord. But so guy out in West Coast. And then also he was recommended by a guy who is well I, I don't want to say the last guy's name. He got in a little bit of trouble too. And then he's pastor in church. I think he's doing a good job. He's been reclaimed. But so three big names spread out throughout the country, which looks good on a resume, but it was weird that no one he ever pastored was on there. Because huh. like when I came That's here, so I had people yeah. that were pastored by me. Right. Right. And I thought that that was really important for the pulpit committee to talk to people who I shepherded for mm-hmm. years. Amen. You know, they yep. were under yep. my ministry. And yep. then I had some people like, I, I, I think you were on. I'm almost positive you yeah, were on. I, yes, you I definitely was. recommended me here. Yes. <clears throat> so, And I had I, a, a couple other people. I advertised you a little more you maybe did. than I should have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I've been paying you commission, so. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, so, I'm going to get that book for you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll give you that book. And then we'll, but then we'll be even. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so all these big names on there. And then he comes in and preaches. He's, he was pretty dynamic. But again, I thought it was weird that we never heard anything from anybody who'd been mm-hmm. pastored by him. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I called out to, <clears throat> to the town where he was pastoring at. And there's guy, Bob Parker. You know Bob Parker. I, I know he was pastoring yeah. in that town at the time. And so I called him. <laughs> and he, he said, uh, he said, hey, Jack, I don't really want to tell you this out of my own mouth. Let me give you the phone number of somebody else who was pastored by him in his church. Mm-hmm. And so he did, that's all he said. I thought, oh, boy, this is going to be interesting. Right. Well, so I talked to first guy. He tells me the most salacious stories you would ever imagine. So anything you're thinking out there, you know, think the worst and then multiply it probably mm-hmm. by 10. Like, yep. And then he says, but don't just take my word for it. I'm going to give you other phone numbers. And then I, I called two that's other people. Good, and I had a legal yeah. pad, and yep. I'm writing all his notes down, like unreal stuff. Yep. <laughs> So, I mean, everything from financial, moral, everything, you know, every category you can check the box. The guy was bad all the way around. It wasn't like he had a little woman problem or something. Yeah, it he, was like the he, whole he thing. he fooled a lot of people, a lot of big he, name people. He did. Yep. And they, were, they yep. were recommending him. Yep. And so, um, and then uh, I had a guy call me who was now pastoring, who was pastored underneath him. He says, man. So I mean, it was so it was unreal. Yeah, I have a file in my file cabinet with his information in there, just in case I ever need it. I th- I thought this guy is so evil. I have a poison file too. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> and and so um, I mean, I could go on about well, the stuff, know, and even yeah. what I found out about him now, and he would have got probably almost a hundred percent of the vote if we would have had him in. So he came in yeah. one time, we approved them to come back, and then we would have voted on him. And everybody liked him because he was a very dynamic person. Mm-hmm. And um, and he was, I promise you, 100% wolf in sheep's clothing. I would mm-hmm. be shocked if this guy, if I'll see this guy in heaven. Mm-hmm. I doubt it, even from where he's at today. Yeah, yeah. And so that's that's what that church was protected from. And it all started with me giving Bob Parker, who has been in the ministry right. forever and has wisdom, you, uh, a call and asking about this guy. I doubt if you'd be surprised, but a lot of our listeners might be of how many churches will call a guy to, you know, to candidate and never check his references, his references or, or his references, references. And I would say not just <laughs> check his references, but check his references, references. How about his credit rating? Sure. Absolutely. You know, and, and um, how and, about do a background check? Yeah. Exactly. To just see if he's ever exactly. been in trouble with the law. Right. I, right. I, I mean, this is fine. Secular places of business would do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need yeah. to do your homework and just yeah. vet the guy. Let me show you a verse in uh, Third John. 
uh, that, you know, everything that we're talking about and just in any situation, you can find something in the Bible about it. And yeah. uh, that's why the Bible is so incredible because it covers just every area of, of life. And in third John, we have the apostle John. And by the way, you know, they say that John was the beloved disciple. He was, mm -hmm. and that he was meek, but he was also the son of thunder. Right. And uh, I think that pretty much carried through even later on. Uh, but it says in third John, right. Uh, verse nine, he said, I wrote unto the church, but the atrophies who pastor the atrophies, I notice this, who loveth to have the preeminence mm -hmm. among them. So that's a narcissistic. And who is supposed to have philosophy. preeminence in the church? Jesus Christ. Right. Yeah. But he, yeah. And, and then it says, loves that preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Can you imagine if the apostle John called you up and said, hey, uh, brother, uh, brother Young, I want to come preach for you this week. Uh, oh, no, you know, no, we don't want you here. Yeah, we're all booked uh, up. Can you, yeah, can you imagine, can <laughs> yeah, you imagine yeah, that? Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, the Apostle John right. wasn't allowed to come to this guy's church. Commissioned by Christ yeah. himself, yeah. And, and then notice what John says, and I think this is where maybe we as pastors need to be a little more militant. Mm -hmm. in this area. Uh, there have been several guys I've blackballed, actually more than that. But I would say, you know, I, would, I may not give specifics, but I would say to a church, you know what? Here's a resume, but I don't think this is really your guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. And, and there's some have just flat out said no. You know? Yeah. And, I mean, it's up to the local church. They do what they want. But if you want my counsel, I'm going to give it. And this guy would not work well here. You know, and every church has a personality, too. Yeah. And not every, you know, maybe a good man wouldn't really fit that. But then in verse 10, it says, wherefore, or, uh, wherefore I come. So John said, I'm coming anyway. Mm-hmm. He said, I'll remember his deeds. I don't think that's a sweet, kind little No, he's going to take care of it when he gets he's, there. Yeah, which he doeth uh, pratting against us. And that was pratting means half lies, okay, which is a whole lie. Mm -hmm. And malicious words, and not content therewith, neither, neither doth he himself receive the brethren. So see, he, he doesn't love the brethren, okay? And forbidding them that would, and casteth them out of the church, I know, I know a guy right now I'm thinking of. He's <laughs> cast more people out of a small church. I don't know how he has anybody left uh -huh. because nobody's as good as him. Uh, beloved, follow not that which is evil. So John called this actually evil, evil. you see. And, and, uh, and, and that's the other thing. We talked about narcissism. But some pastors and some good pastors are paranoid. They're afraid that somebody isn't going to do the job you know, well enough or – they might get some something wrong, you know, some doctrine that's not quite right. right. Or, but they're paranoid. Or, or so they paranoid. would never, never let one of their men teach a Sunday school right, class. Right, right. Yeah. Or they're paranoid that somebody might take over their position or, you know, outshine, whatever. Outshine the master. Right, right. And and that's that's wrong. Where's the humility? Right. You know, the humility yeah. that should go along with that. Yeah. And, I, I, you know, again, everything shall bear fruit after its own kind. Right. And so like bears like. And I, I think as a pastor – you know, as they say in, in the business world, you should be working yourself out of a job or training yep. yourself out yep. of a job. And, you know, if assistant like pastors. training other people how to shepherd sheep. Right. And assistant pastors can fit into this, too. Mm -hmm. There can be assistant pastors who are wolves. Yeah, absolutely. And, absolutely. and once they get on their feet and start to grow. You get a little Absal Absalom in they there. They get a little Absalom. Say, right. oh, oh, if I were made judge, right. everything right. would be great. And you know, yeah. a guy told me something too late, but he told me, you know, too soon old, too you know, too, what is it? Too, too soon, soon old, old too, too late, smart. Right, too late. Yeah. How come? How come youth is waste, wasted, wasted on, on the young? young. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> but he told me he said when your assistant pastor starts to talk like he knows more than you do, that's the time to encourage him to take his yes, own church. Yes, absolutely. And I learned that too late. Yes. But that's. I think that's a good solid formula. Yes. Yeah, yeah. that's good. And it may not be that the guy's evil, but it may be that really. You know, God is leading him to something different. Yeah. And as a pastor, you can help him with yes. that, you know. In, in, uh, or he may be evil, in, in, you know, too. Yeah, absolutely. So. And Christ is the authority, and uh, and that's why there should be one senior pastor, not a, some sort right. of silly board. Right. right. Um, you, might, you know, however, you're, however you yep. break down the government of your church. But I'm thinking of the Roman centurion, a man under authority and in authority. Mm -hmm. That assistant pastor has to be under the pastor. <laughs> right. And so when he's not under the pastor, yeah, and he's as smart as the pastor, he's yep. leading his own way. Yeah, it's time for him to I'm, to, to I'm, bless him with a. 
I'm, I'm going to say something that's going to sound controversial mm-hmm. to guys in our, you know, mindset uh, group, if you please, or camp or whatever you want to call it. I mean, we're independent Baptists, and that makes us part of a group, whether we right. think it is or not. Yes. Uh, but I, I asked this question at the last ordination council I sat on, and it it didn't shock me. I wasn't surprised, but it shocked me that that I wasn't, you know, surprised by it. I said, apart from Jesus Christ, what is the ultimate authority in a Baptist church? And the candidate said, the pastor. And that's not true. No. We are, but but we've been taught that in a lot of our colleges, that the pastor's the boss, he has a rule over you. The, the, the idea of rulership is a guide through the woods. Right. So it's it's a it's a man who has a direction. He's being led by the Holy Spirit, and people want to follow that. Mm-hmm. However, it doesn't make him the dictator, no, the Adolf Hitler of the no. church. And uh, the ultimate authority in a Baptist it's, church is the congregation. Yeah, apart from Jesus Christ, and and through Jesus Christ, people say, "What about the?" He's talking about the Bible when he says Jesus Christ, because Christ rules yeah, through right, the Word, right? <laughs> so yeah, 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 yeah. What about sure. the Bible? The Bible, yeah. and so yeah, we're yeah we're already there. I think that I think there ought to be some something written into our constitutions. Mm-hmm. And and by the way, what has shocked me as I've gone to these churches over the last what seven years or whatever it's been is how disorganized they are. And one of the gifts a pastor is supposed to have is the it's gift of administration. Yeah. Right. And, I mean, there are some churches, they don't have a constitution. They, I, I remember, you know, when I, was, I, I don't have this, so, you know, if something happens to me, don't look for it. <laughs> but um, I remember my dad, Yeah, you, really, my, you my, do. my age you or do. younger, um, and we have a good constitution. We got, mm-hmm. you know, if I if I kicked over, I, I think one of the things that perhaps I've done here is put the church in really close contact with fellows like yourself. Mm-hmm. And then we have a good deacon board, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, we'd be fine. But I remember my dad having a folder, like, in his office in the top drawer. And he would have been my age. He was a young mm-hmm. guy, and he was healthy, you know, and he's still he's 71, still pastoring. Um, but yeah, he had a, what to do if I die. And they already had a constitution. Yeah, they already had yeah. deacons and everything. I think, I think we ought to write into our constitution, uh, a method of removing a pastor. Yes. I mean, I mean, do, do some of them not have it? Cause I, I know most our, of them don't have it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Most of them don't have it. I mean, to, to where if a majority wanted to have a vote of confidence, uh huh, you know, something like that, I, I really think that. I mean, there, there's some weeds with that. Yeah. You, know, you can get into the weeds with that. Yeah. But some of these churches, they've been taught that, bless God, he's the man of God. You touch a man of God, God's going to kill you. Right. And where the guy's really a creep, mm-hmm. you know, they've crept in unawares. Yes. Or they're a wolf, you know. And, and the church ought to have some method. Uh, now, I don't think a deacon ought to be a diatrophies either. Right. And sometimes that happens. Yeah. I, I know one pastor, they, he was a candidate. And he said, uh, one of the deacons was pretty obvious. He, the guy was a wolf. Yes. And he said, uh, are you going to be a dictator? And, <laughs> and and the candidate said, no, and neither are you. <laughs> that was perfect <laughs> you answer. Know? You know? Perfect and, answer. And, and there's got to be, we need to have some kind of mechanism. Yeah. Uh, I, I know pastors have gotten into immorality and a church and they feels. Can't, they can't do anything. They can't really get rid of them. It's almost like he owns it. Right. Yeah. So I think yeah. that that's something that we ought to think about. Yeah, look at your church constitution. Maybe get that updated. Yeah. I know there's a yeah. lot of good uh, legal places you can go, and um, you know CLA and others, mm-hmm. is you can get a good sample constitution. I know they have that in theirs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's good. But a lot of them don't. A lot of churches yeah. don't. I mean, and it's not. Yeah. yeah, it's not hard to update. What I do is, um, <laughs> like, I know when I had to adopt a constitution, uh, ours was antiquated of First Baptist and Black River. I went to Lighthouse Legal Ministries mm-hmm. to be a Terry Hamilton. Terry, I don't know if you remember him. Yeah, good friend of mine. And uh, he had a sample one. It was like almost like copy and paste. Yes. I liked it. I liked it better than CLAs. It was uh, less, you know, CLAs was so much longer. Right. And this was right. more simple. And sure. he, you know, you got layman. You expect layman to understand all this legalese. Right, right. You know, <laughs> you know some, sometimes there are things that are good to have in your constitution, but they're not practical. Right. I, I'm not saying CLAs are not practical. I don't, yeah. I don't, yeah. I'm just yeah. saying that. We love CLA here. So yeah, we yeah, yeah, yeah. Do yeah we don't want to be sued. You know? so, <laughs> right, right, right. But, but, you know, there are some things that just aren't, I mean, 
they just don't really fit our culture, right? Let's say, right? You know, like, but, yeah, I was thinking CLAs was very complex, mm-hmm. and we were a simple church and yep. a military church, and people are coming and going, and you know, the size yep. goes like this yep. as people come and go, right? And we needed something simple, mm-hmm. and so again, it was almost copy and paste, and yep. all those steps are in there. And then, if a layman, even a layman who's not a lawyer, can read it and understand what what right. step A, B, C, and D is, if they need to get something like that done, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, amen, amen. It's a, it's been a challenge. It's it's kind of been enjoyable. The, the thing I have a hard time with, you know, I pastored, you know, a long time in, in one place, and I know the people know me. They know my quirks. Yeah, right. They know my sarcasm. They right. know my and lame so you jokes. can be yourself. But when you go to a church, yeah. you know, brand new, it's like, what do you say? You know, or it's no. Every church that you go yeah. to, it is really weird. You yeah. have your own DNA, and it's so right. wonderful to preach to your own church family. Yes, because it's a family meeting. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when I go outside of here, I, yeah, I'm always try to co- be kind of cautious right. too, right? Because yeah, you can have too much humor, and they think, what? Yeah. What do you think this is a joke? And, and there's a lot or, of things, right? And there's a lot of things too that. You know, you just you want to be. It's really none of my business, right? You know, it's right. the church's business, right? And I usually don't give a, any advice to speak of unless I'm asked, right? Uh, if I'm asked, I'm not shy. Yeah, this one church has has asked me to sit into two business meetings, and one I didn't say a word. I was very proud of myself, by the way. <laughs> you wanted to, though. Yeah. You had words yeah. in your head. Yeah, that you wanted yeah. To say. But I mean, but it was all, it was it was all good. But then the second meeting, a man pulled some things out of my message out of context and used them in the debate that was on the floor. And I said, no, you got to give me the mic. I said, you know, I wasn't going to say anything, but you used my name. And then I gave him a pretty good lecture and some things that were going on. But yeah, I, I, I try not to usurp or, you know, it's the yes. local church. The authority is in the local church, not the interim pastor. Yeah, and the shepherd's whatever. a guide, right. you know, not a dictator. Right, right. That's right. so all you can give is guidance in, in, in the way of advice. Right. And, and again, you want someone to give you advice. I heard a saying a couple weeks ago, I thought, oh, that's so good. There's people who can give you opinion. Mm-hmm. They've never done it. Right. And, but then there's people who can give you advice and counsel I've because been they the, have done yeah, it. I've been in and the And so you get somebody who's, you know, who's had yeah. some decades of experience that can right. speak to you from advice. Right. They're not just giving you a fly-by-night opinion. And, and we have a little club going almost. You know, there was, well, Pastor Overton's with the Lord now, but it, there was him. And then his son does this. Tom Styles does this, yeah, Rich, and Tom Styles mm-hmm. does this. I do this, and and sometimes we'll collaborate, mm-hmm. you know, the four of us, and say, you know, this is going on at this church. What do you think? And so it's it's, you know, we we had a we had a um well over in Newark Lighthouse Baptist Church, uh, brother Dan Smith was there a mm-hmm. lot. Yes, and he was their counsel. And Dan's their another guy. one, right? Dan and Smith. we had some guys here for this church planters we had here last week from Lighthouse and. Um, they were very disappointed because Brother Smith couldn't be there because yeah. of the family uh, right. tragedy this week. Right. And um, and so, yeah, he was really, because Brother Smith was like his pastor. Mm-hmm. Sure. He was his pastor between pastors. Right. You know, yeah. and so it was very yeah. nice for that church. And I get that, too. I've, uh, the church in Watertown, I was there about a year. That's and right. I've gone yeah. back to, yeah. to uh, uh, banquets. Fellowship. preaching a fellowship meeting on Monday. Well, Fellowship Baptist Church, is that the name of it? Friendship. Uh, fellowship. No, Fellowship, yeah, yeah. Fellowship yeah. Baptist Church. I'll be preaching there Monday night at a fellowship meeting. Yeah, Brother you know, Pickett's. And, yeah, and you he's can, a, he, he's a watcher. So shout out to Brother Pickett. Oh yeah, brother. Yeah. Oh, is he really? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He's such a good man. <laughs> I love that guy. I mean, I tell you, if you of, want to know about <laughs> if you want to know about Israel, he's the guy to talk to. And if yeah, he's taking trips yep, over. There. If you want to take a trip to Israel, he's the guy to t- talk to. I mean, and he's he, got a trip coming up, doesn't he? Because uh, well, he tried to sell me on I, it. Yeah, I know. And it was just like I'm in the lifestyle. I've already been to Israel. I uh-huh. mean, I would definitely go. Hey, man, if you can go, go. It's a am- yep. it's awesome. I'm definitely going back. Yeah. But you know, we got three kids that are like, you know, right in the. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna wait till they start shipping off. You know, I'm a Scotsman, right? Right. I get to go free here pretty soon. If you pile enough people yeah. onto your. No, 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 no. Rapture trips. comes, tribulation, oh. I get to go back free. You're, you're going to go to the New Jerusalem. Yeah, and it's going to look better. Like, too. why would I want to go to the old Jerusalem <laughs> when I'm going to the New Jerusalem? <laughs> yeah. That's what he's thinking. Yeah, I don't want those scud muscles coming into my mouth. <laughs> oh, like, you guys can take care of that. Yeah, that's so, fine. No, but really, I would like to go. But, you know, there's oh, a lot of it, things I like it, to do in life yeah. that aren't going to happen. It's for amazing. Me. Yeah. I want to tell you something. You know, my, my dad's not impressed with much a lot of times, you know. With what? With, he's not impressed with much. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, if he comes back for a conference or something like that, right. I was, it was pretty good. Yeah. You know, that <laughs> sounds, type of thing. Sounds like me. But he went to Israel, 
I, I went first and I was telling, and he just, he thought, ah, you know, yeah. you know, that's just Jack, you know, he's weird or whatever. <laughs> but, um, he finally went and when he came back, he said, that was one of the most fantastic things I've ever done in my life. He said that was better than any preacher's meeting or any conference I've ever been to. Hey, and, yeah. um, yeah, I really I'm felt, sure yeah, I really felt the same way when I was over there. It was like the, the Bible in 4d. I mean, you yeah, see right. everything. Right. I had a, it's amazing. I had a Bible college professor who used to do tours, and, and but he would go off the beaten path, and at different at odd times, and so uh, you know for all the tourists, they take them down to where David killed Goliath and Megiddo. Yes, and uh, and the tour director say, you know, run down in the valley there and get a stone just like David used. Well, he was taking <laughs> he, he was taking his tour tr- group on an odd time. Uh-huh. There was a big truck there, there, there was, was stones in the place. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a true story? Yeah, it is a true story. That is so funny. Oh, man. Those Jews are smart, man. Yeah, they are. God, God has anyway. given them a yeah. gift. Yeah, that's right. A gift to take the Gentiles' money, right? Yes. Isn't that funny? <laughs> but no, I'd like to go. Yeah. You know, if somebody, somebody yeah. paid my way, that'd be great. I bet, I bet Brother Pickett will take you. Oh, he would free. take me, yeah, for, you know, for for six thousand dollars. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think that's what it is. I think so if too. I remember, I looked at his pamphlet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm hey. I'm saving for my nursing home. You know, I can't be throwing away six thousand dollars. Yeah, I well, the, yeah. I don't think there'll be nursing homes by the time it's time for you to go in. Oh, you don't? Okay, I hope not. Man, yeah, so, no, I don't. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, you know, you don't want to go to nursing home. That's no, for sure. Three hundred dollars a day. You know, that's pretty high. You know, you can live on a cruise ship. Cruise ship cheaper. Cheaper. Than nursing. Yeah. 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 And they have doctors. You know, that's right. All the food. Doctors you can and eat. nurses yeah. and buffets. Yeah. Maybe that's what I'll do. That's a that's a good plan. <laughs> I, would, I would do that. I'd do that route right there. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. So how about we? The the church has the oversight of some sort of a shepherd that's in their area. That can help them, some sort of interim, uh, different pastors they're in contact with. Mm-hmm. They formed a pulp committee, and now it's time to get some guys in. What um, what should they do as far as um, trying to find candidates? You know, it's a it's a spiritual work. Okay, I, I mean, there there is the spiritual end of it, and then there is the practical. You know, what do we do actually do? But I've seen God raise up. Man, just from word of mouth, mm-hmm. uh, I know I've helped place three guys, I believe, maybe four, and God would get, put a name in my heart. And I'll talk to the guy, and they'll say, no, I don't want to. And then a week later, they call me and say, you know what, I'd be interested in that. Yeah. And so it's a work of God. It really yeah, is, a, it work, is. It, a work of God. And, you know, I, I mean, you have the big denominations, and they have their computers, you know, whatever. Right. And, and one of the things yeah. that I know has been done, I don't know if it's in vogue now, is that um, churches would call Bible colleges. Yeah. And yeah. ask for resumes. Right. And what the, college, the Bible colleges do yeah. is they keep on hand resumes yeah. of guys who have graduated from them right. or who are looking. One, one church that I'm not sure I'm going to go back because – uh, they've been without a pastor for a couple of years and don't seem to have any interest in really they, getting they a don't pastor. Want one. Yeah. So I, I sat the guy down. I said, get a copy of the Sword of the Lord, write a letter to every Bible college and every yeah. you know church that's advertising in there <coughs> and ask, you know, tell them your situation and ask. Yeah. There's a couple of websites. Uh, Dan Knickerbocker has a website. Okay. You can yeah, put, yeah, you can yeah. put the church on there. Yeah, familiar and, with the yeah, and, yeah. and he would have all solid people. There's another one called Hope Biblical Counseling that you can put your church on. I think those are pretty good guys. Yeah. You know, and... Uh, then whatever region of the country you are, if right. call pastors, again, that um, that you would look up to or that you want your right. church to be like, like you said, they have a great church. Yeah. Um, and, you know, call those pastors and ask if they know of anybody yeah. that's looking. And, you know, um, guys fellowship with other guys. Mm-hmm. You know, what I, what I did when I was leaving First Baptist Church of Black River is it was a military church right outside the gates of Fort Drum, and so it, it's unique. <clears throat> it's a great ministry, but you've got to get used to, like, mm-hmm. having a new church every every right. three years. Right, come and go. And, uh, yeah, that was the saddest thing about the whole thing. I, yeah. I loved it there, but it was like when I left there, it was like getting out of the Army almost. Yeah. Um, and so 
it's just heartbreaking, like having people like, oh, that's, my babies are going well, away. And um, and so, yeah, so what? I was blessed there. But so I'm leaving, and so I got to find somebody who knows what they're getting into. Mm-hmm. I took my first church in Minnesota. We started with 35 people. I had 86 move away in five years. So I, <laughs> I kind of know what you're talking about. We yeah. ended up to about 100 people. Yeah. But but that was heartbreaking. Yeah. I mean, you get the church growing, and yeah. they move away, and they couldn't take the weather or whatever. And, so, and I try to look for a man who I think would fit the church. I mean, yeah. I, I don't want to get in the way and, of the Holy and Spirit. And that's you that's know? the way yeah. I worked it, too, because I called yeah. Tom Lancaster, who works with the military. He was a missionary to a military church in Germany for mm-hmm. 20 years. And so he preaches around. Great guy. I don't know if you ever got a chance to meet him. I no. love Brother Lancaster. He's like one of my favorite people. I just saw him not that long ago. He's like 82, still oh, preaching around. Mom. Great preacher and the great man of God. I mean, he has a burden for the military, and he loved our church. Mm-hmm. He had a burden for our church. Like, it was very important to him, our church. Mm-hmm. And Fair so enough. I talked to him, and he had he, he had the guy. He said, I know I have this guy. Yeah. Well, I, we had a local guy who um, was closer by and would have been convenient to get this other guy. And I knew this other guy knew, you know. Um, and so, you know, it would have been convenient to to look for somebody locally or mm-hmm. someone close by. Right. Instead, this guy, uh, uh, Brother Colette, who's there now, is doing a great yeah. job. I know him. It was a big act of faith because we had to fly the four children out for the candidate, you know, fly them out, I think maybe once or twice. And, um, and then also we're going to move a guy from the opposite end of the continent. Mm-hmm. And so right. that's going to cost, you know, six or $10,000. Right. I can't remember how much that was. And then get them established and all that stuff. And now here's someone all the way on the other side of the country. But Brother Lancaster made this statement to me, and it convicted me. You know how someone says something, you know, it's like really the Lord speaking mm-hmm. through them? Yep. It doesn't happen often <laughs> in my life. Like not all, I mean, people minister yeah. to me all the time. Right. But every once in a while, someone says something, and it's like, whoa. It really clicks. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, they're, you know, Lord's mouthpiece. And so he said, let me ask you something, Brother Young. You know, he's <laughs> from Alabama. He says, are you acting in faith or by sight? Uh-huh. Amen. And I knew that I was trying to make a, a decision by sight right. looking for somebody right. close by. Mm-hmm. And um, I thought, yep, you're right. Yep. And that was the right choice for that church. We voted him in before I came here. And, uh, you know, the Lord used him immensely. He's been, he's been there for over four years now. Amen. Yeah. 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 So I, I, like the church in, uh, in Watertown, I, I counseled him. I said, you want to get somebody that's not afraid of the weather? Right. You oh, know? yeah, because I mean, it's brutally cold. So, yes. so you get some guy from Florida up right. there. He thinks he's going to die. He grew up in Florida, and his w- <laughs> and the wife grew up in Florida. You know, the wife yeah. needs to be factored into this, too. Yes. And you're going to move into Watertown. And, 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 I write, and you get snow by the yeah. foot there. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I was praying about uh, the church in Watertown and, you know, getting them a pastor. And Lee Pickett, hi, Lee. <laughs> Lee Pickett, you know, came to my mind. Yeah. And I called him. He said, no, I'm not going to be leaving. I won't leave here. And I thought, yeah. oh, okay, well, I just, you know, your name came to my heart. And he called me back, I don't know, a week or two later and said, you know what? I might be interested in that. But he lived in Thompson, Canada, which is 400 miles north of um, Winnipeg. And uh, it's, at, it's at the tree line where the trees stop grow, growing and the polar bears raid the, the city dump. So going to Watertown's mo- retiring yeah, south, right? Yeah, he says, I'm, I'm, I've moved south. I'm in the south now, you know. And, That's funny. And they hardly notice, you know, the weather. Yeah. And, and, and he's a military man. Right. And, yeah. uh, and so he's, he fits in great with Fort Drum. Right. And the people in the church and the weather. And it was like, a, you know, a puzzle piece fitting right in the, the, the right spot. And, and, uh, but the Lord had to move him from a long ways off too, yeah. you know? Right. And it was tough to get, you know, to get back into America from Canada with the COVID and all the, th- and his son as well. Having yeah. Problems so it, it was an act of faith. Yeah, it was. And so yeah, yeah. the church, the church ought to not act out of convenience. Again, sometimes there's like guys like around your church within a 20, 50 mile radius. They're like vultures waiting yeah, for someone to right. die. Yes. And then they can swoop down. On. I'm called. I'm ordained. Yep. I have a Bible. Yep. Co- well, what have you been doing for the last right. 20 years? Exactly. Exactly. And well, that, I've been waiting for a church. But, but, you know, so <laughs> like you haven't been doing anything. But there are people <clears throat> in the church that God might call to take that church. Right. Absolutely. And I think of Brother Constantino uh-huh. out in Buffalo. 
Because he know, was a layman in that he church. He was a deacon in the church. Deacon in the church. And, and he called me. He said, what do you think? And I said, I think it's very possible God yeah. could be leading you. Yeah. And I think some churches have missed the right man because yeah. they said, well, this guy, you know. He, There's a fellow, Rich Perry, out in Buffalo Way, too. I can't think what town Rich lives in, but it's a little town. And uh, they'd called pastors before at that church, but Rich, you know, Rich loved the Lord and he's layman, and then he would always be the interim between mm-hmm. pastors because yeah. kind of, it was kind of a backwater area, and they'd get guys in there that didn't know what they're getting into. I mean, it's a slow right. moving country town and sure. nice church, nice <laughs> congregation. But uh, yeah, Rich ended up taking over that church, and now he's retired. So mm-hmm. he just got full time retirement. He's a pastor yeah. and was within inside within the church. Yeah, yeah. So I think I mean. You look, you look scripturally, I think that's pretty much how it happened. Yes. The church of Antioch, yes. you know, and so forth, and Acts yeah. 13. And, yeah, and, I believe uh, that, and um, I'm thankful here, you know, like even with, you know, our, our assistant pastors, they're, they're from the church. Mm-hmm. I like that. I'd yeah. rather have yeah. ingrown guys yeah. than somebody had to bring out from another culture. Inside. If you talk about, you know, uh, Dan Smith, mm-hmm. Uh, he pastored there, what, did he pastor 40 years or something? I, it was 40. I, yeah. Didn't they have a big 40 yeah. and, celebration? And, and his uh, son just banquet. celebrated 20 years. Isn't that amazing? That's so awesome. Because he was a youth pastor for, And so know. there's a continuity, yeah. yes. and the leadership change is not really that much right. any bumps. Right, and, and And Travis is making some minor changes as he goes He's along. He's being that, himself. But that's called yeah. growth, you know? Yeah, I right, mean, absolutely. You you're going to have change, you're going to have growth, you're going to change. Yeah. And he's done a great job. Yeah. And, and that was just a beautiful transition. It was well planned, well thought out, well prayed over. And I would say too, when a when a pastor goes and takes a church, it's a major personality change. You got somebody different you know, at the head of the table. That's true. And so it's nice, like, you know, Travis was there for twenty years. They know mm-hmm. him. I, and I, so there's a culture shock for the church and also the pastor when you have somebody from without coming in, it's just a natural thing. I started a church and then I turned it over to a national, you know, here in America. And because uh, Pastor Overton was just after me to take Temple Baptist. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he got strong about it, you know, which he could. He was in a godly way, but he could let you know what he was thinking. Right. And so I took Temple, but I knew that he had pastored there 32 years. He didn't actually start the church, but he might as well have. Right. And I, I, I knew, too, that, that, you know, I didn't want to make a lot of changes. People don't like change, no. and people need to expect it's, change it's, it's when one they get of, a new pastor. Yeah, it's one of Robert you Greene's know? laws of power. Preach change, but don't change because people yeah. hate change. <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty true. And, so one, yeah. one lady, as they're like four years, and, and, I, and I mentioned that to one of our deacon's wives, and she said, well, I think there's been a lot of change. <laughs> I said, I said, what are you talking about? Because I really hadn't changed. I mean, Isn't just, that funny? We just keep doing the same thing. It things. was just, yeah. And yeah. so, yeah. And I said, well, what are you talking about? She said, well, well, you, for instance, I said, well, yeah, I'm, I'm not Pastor Overton. I'm me. I can't be anybody but me. And then some guys come in and change the order of servant, like Born. first Sunday. Born the, a china and, shop. And, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. terrible. Yeah. But I, like, be a gentleman. You're going into someone else's household. Right, right. And I'd say you might wait. I, I don't care if there's something that you completely disagree with. Don't take the church then on conscience or else tell the church, right. if I came, I will change this once I get right. there. Um, just so you know, when you vote for that, yeah. that we're going to do that. Well, yeah. Whether whether we like it or not, when a pastor comes to a new church, he, he is joining them. Yes, I agree. You know, I mean, that's, I, we don't I, like that. I maybe, took this church, true. I was 39, and um, I was wiser then than I was when I was 30, my first pastor, but it was, you know, it was essentially a church, church plant there at mm-hmm. um I only had one year round member at First Baptist in Black River when mm-hmm. I went there. So it was a, it was a church start. I could do whatever I wanted. Right. And I know if I would have came in here at 30, I would have like change change change. Yeah. This yeah. is the way it right. is and it you know and everything is a fight. But when I came here, um I even told them I said I'm, I'm not going to change anything. Right. I don't know you. I don't know the you know the personality of the church and you know you got to get to know each other i'm gonna change nothing i'm i'm not even gonna touch anything for at least a year well you know if you go back to the sheep analogy yeah it takes a long time for sheep to recognize the shepherd and follow him right and and a pastor needs to realize that he needs to earn the conf earn is a good word earn the confidence if you take a church they say that you're going to lose 15 percent of the membership and i would say that would be true for about everybody even if you're like 
twice the personality of yeah. the guy before, yeah. right. there's going to be a certain percentage that were there for the guy before. Right. And for whatever reason, they just don't hear your voice, as yes. you're saying, and they're going to move on. But there's going to be a, a lot of people leave. Yeah, you go in there like a bull in a china shop, right. and you right. know, we're going to do this, and, I, and you know, we're not going to do that anymore. And fortunately, you'll gain some people, too, so it'll offset that a little bit. Yeah. You know. Yes. Uh, yeah. And the, yeah. And the people that you gain will come in under you. Right. So you kind of set the standard. Right. It takes time. It they takes say, time for they people say to They say seven trust years you. it takes for a church to, to become the personality of the pastor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, like I said, I go, to, like I, I go to these different churches and I can tell you what the pastor was like. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Good and bad, I guess. But, right. Yeah. You know, I absolutely. Tell you what, they're, what they're like. And, uh, you know, yeah, I, you, I've always used you. You don't, too much you don't humor. attract what you want. You attract yeah. what you are. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I can preach here and and use humor now, and they get it. Yeah, but I can go to a church where I've never been or haven't only been a couple of times. Use humor, and they look at me like a like a you know yeah. what's wrong with this guy? Yes, you know. Yeah, and I, so that's something I myself have to be careful about. Right, you know, and, and so You're getting back to that preaching to different congregations. Every congregation's right. different, has different right. ex- expectations. But they have the personality of the pastor. They do there a long time. Yeah, they. Oh, yeah, know? absolutely. You know, so. Yeah, the longer you're there, and I really think that uh, to reap the benefits of you know pastoring, you know, I was reading Wearsby or something. And it's like it's not until like after ten years. Mm-hmm. To that's, really that's, start reap, yeah. you know, the benefits of your longevity. And if you're 70. <laughs> yeah. You can't do that. Well, you know, you know and you then the relationship can't. that you have between people um, that uh, that you pastored for decades mm-hmm. is like nothing else in this world. Right, right. Yeah, it's worth its weight in gold. That's why these these four pastors that have died, I, you know, I went there and realized that these people are suffering from grief. Yes. And just like yes. the loss of a, a loved yeah, one. Yeah, they lost a shepherd. Yeah. So and, yeah, someone they looked at. If, right. Just think about this. If this is it, all they did, let's say they didn't, they just went to church and they watched one guy every week. Let's say they only attended one, mm-hmm. one service a week. But you're sitting there for one hour of your life every week watching this guy talk. Mm-hmm. I mean, he plays a ro- big role in your life. Who right. else do you hear talk for an hour? That's right. That's true. <laughs> you know, that's you probably true. don't talk to your wife for an yeah, hour. That's true. That's unfortunately, true. that's true. Yeah, yeah. So that's and a big that's a, a big bonding. loss. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's so I try to be cognizant of that. You know, in these cases. Yeah. So it's uh, sad, it's a sad thing, and and uh, these people need to be loved. You know, another thing I try to do is be encouraging. Mm-hmm. You know, and not be, you know, I'm. I'm pretty good at preaching against sin and all those things, and that that's all needs to be done. But a lot of churches like that really don't need that no, type of message you know, they at that need, point. They, no, they, they need, need the sugar, them. they need the honey. Yeah. They, yeah. And I'm, I'm telling them, you know, God has a gift for you. That gift is a new pastor. It's going to be a, a new normal. It's a, a new era for you. It's going to be exciting, you know, and those yes. kind of things. And uh and and encourage them that you know a lot of and churches it's, lose, you know it's hope and that's what yeah, the Lord hope, always gives us. Yeah, a lot of churches will lose their pastor and they they lose their they lose their uh, faith in the future. Yes, you know, are we going to get a new pastor? And I mean, they they are discouraged. Yeah, and they're worrying. Yeah. Is my church going to go under? Yeah. Is it going to die? And yeah. I've heard this worried from people who like go to a church with many people there. Yep. They still think their church might die. Yeah, that's because true. Because they're between pastors right, or whatever. Right. Yeah. Jay Adams, I've read a lot of his books and counseling and that. And the thing I get from his books is the number one thing people need is is uh is hope. Yes. You know, and so that's one of the things I try to do in a church is is give them hope. Mm-hmm. You know, hope doesn't make ashamed. Right. And the hope that we're giving them is the, the real Bible hope, and that's right. an expectation yeah. of a future blessing. Yeah. And God's yeah. got a blessing for them. Right? Absolutely. They're saved, so, and there's a blessing in the yes. future. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So well, let's see. What else do we need to cover? <laughs> oh, um, should should you a church look at three or four candidates all at one time? <laughs> sure. And have have sure. them in like a popularity contest. Oh, yeah. yeah. Beauty if you, contest. If you want to split your church three ways, that's a good way of doing it. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, you know, God has one man. Yes. You know, you're calling one guy. Okay. And it's not a popularity contest, mm-hmm. like you said. Uh, but it's okay for a pulpit committee to look at many resumes. 
and right. talk to many yeah, guys. Yeah, you get as okay. many resumes yeah. as you can. But if you if you bring two people in and say, let's vote on the, you know, the women are going to vote for the handsome one. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yes. I'm saying? The men are going to vote for the deer hunter. Yep. You know, and, <laughs> yeah. and it's, it's something I can go fish, something right. I can go fishing with. Right. And yeah. It, and, and it's going to, it'll bring a split to the church. Yes. And I don't think it's wise. No. You know. Yeah, yeah, I agree. If the first you, thing you deal I like, with one candidate at a time. Right. Right. And don't have, let's say, well, we're all going to have them all come in to preach. And then after that, we'll decide which one's the candidate. Don't do that either. No. That's the same no. thing. It's a popularity contest. Right. All the deacon's wives are telling their deacon husband which <laughs> what which vote? one yes. to get in for the right. candidacy. Right. Yeah, and so, I think yeah, you deal with one candidate at a time. And then typically, according to the Constitution, they're there for, they preach for one Sunday. And then most constitutions, you wait two Sundays and like the third Sunday you vote. So it gives you a nice space of time to right. think about it and, um, and you know, consider and pray and all that stuff. And then you vote after. And then if that one doesn't go through, bring in, another, you, bring in you, number two. You go, go again. Yeah. 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 One thing I think is dangerous is a mentality of, of uh, we're not going to vote for the first guy that comes along. Well, maybe the first guy comes along is God's will. I, I've heard you that. Know, I think that is so stupid. Yeah, it is stupid. Um, I mean, maybe I mean, maybe God and, wants. You and know. here, you know, here at this church, and I, you know, it's it's still still up for debate whether it was God, you know, sending <laughs> me here. Or not. <laughs> but but um, I was the first guy. Yeah, and they voted me right in. Yeah, you know, yep. and and then the same that uh, first Baptist Black River was like one, you know, one candidate mm-hmm. voted in and got you know God has used them. So yeah. 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 So I think it's just so much simpler and easier. Yeah, you just need to, <laughs> it really is, but you just need to be sensitive. Is this the right guy? Yeah. Yes or no. And if it's no, then go to the next one, but don't throw the guy out because he's the first one. That's not fair either. Right. Right. You know, so, yeah. And yeah. And I, um, yeah, I remember in our church in Michigan that we had, uh, I think one candidate, he came, he's a very nice guy and he was recommended by good people. Um, but like zero experience and like almost fresh out of college yeah. and the people didn't really have confidence. Um, and then I, there was another guy that came in and he was probably, he was a really nice guy too. And he was probably 65. And then, so the people were kind of worried and he, when he spoke, he spoke quietly and he wasn't like a robust yeah. 65, yeah. you okay. know? Um, so you're like you and my dad and everything, you know, you guys are doing great and you're, you're, you're are you at 70 yet? I'm 70. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I'm dead, on borrowed se- dead time, 71 <laughs> yeah. and then robust. So, right. so this guy's 65. He was, you know, kind of seemed older than he was. Mm-hmm. And so then that made everybody nervous. So the first, so the one guy was too young, <laughs> the next guy was too old, <laughs> you know? And, uh, and so there is sometimes you, you know, it's nothing against the guy right. or whatever, right. but uh, for one reason or another, you know, too skinny, too fat, whatever, you know, you're on to the next guy. Right. Yeah. It's, I almost hesitate to say this, but, you know, I was reading a book that said that a pastor will attract people 10 years younger and 10 years older. And that's why I've had almost all Have you all found these, that to be true? Y- yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, yeah I, I, I would think so. Almost all these churches I've helped out, almost every one of them wanted me to be their pastor. And I said, you know what? They probably looked at you as young because the church was older. Yeah, yeah, in some cases, yes. And but you know, that's true. Yeah. But I said, you know, your pastor just passed away. I you could call me and I have a stroke tomorrow. You know, <laughs> yeah, right, right. And you're gonna be in the same position. Yeah. And I, I like doing what I'm doing and you know, let's let's get somebody that maybe be a little younger. Right. Not that an older guy couldn't do the, a good job, but yeah, and, and so for some churches, it depends on you know where your church is at. If it's like some huge multifaceted church, yeah, mm-hmm. you probably don't want to call a guy fresh right. out of Bible college, right? Right. Um, others, you might say, well, you know, uh, for this, that, or the other reason, we can get a younger guy, and he's yep. going to be like a puppy dog. He's going to chew the furniture, you know. <laughs> my he's first, gonna, church, he's going to make messes all over the place. My first you, church, I was twenty three. I'd been assistant pastor twice, short term. 23, it was a church plant, okay, and they had about 35, maybe 40 people on Easter Sunday. Uh-huh. Uh, but I went to the deacons. I said, look, I know I'm young. This is my first church, and I'm going to rely on you guys a lot yeah. for advice. And I humbled down, and that, I think they, they really respected yeah. that. And then um, I think the people were super gracious. 
<laughs> you know, with they, me. Yes. Knowing yeah. that I was young yeah. and, and this and, and that. That was the interim it pastor. Out. was the same way, 27 yeah. years old. Yeah. People gave me so much honor and respect. Mm-hmm. And I was making stupid mistakes. And but I, didn't I think I think yeah. they, yeah. And I think yeah. they just knew the age that I was at. They knew my heart. Mm-hmm. And they, like, they really loved me. So, that, yeah, they gave me, like, you know, I had all the authority of a pastor as an yep. interim pastor at yep. 27 years old. And I think, yeah, the people, you know, saw my youth and gave me a break right. and, and they, they were really, you know, they were really proud of me, right. you know, <laughs> like, look, look at our baby boy over here. Isn't he something? You know, when, when you call a pastor, that's the time to evaluate the pay. Yeah. And if a guy comes in and just says, how much you got to pay me? He's probably not the one you want. Right. On the other hand, he's got to live. That's right. And there's a book out that had some really, really good advice for a pulpit committee. But one of the pieces of advice that I think is an error is how they pay the pastor. And the idea is you take the average of the congregation and that's... And pay him the average of the congregation. Right, but that's really silly. Mm-hmm. Uh, because you've got people on Medicaid, you know, uh, yes. on, on Medicaid, you've got... You know, single people, you've got... Yeah, some people you know, with Social Security. Or older people, right. Yeah. And, and and that's not really fair. But their earning days are over. Right. They've already made their money. Right. Even the average of the community may yeah. not be as wide. That's right. And, and this one church, I advised them. I said, look, here, here's a pastor. He's got, you know, 20 years of experience. He's got his master's degree, let's say, from whatever. Uh, and, and he's a professional. Yeah. Find out what the school counselor gets paid. Yeah. And it'll probably choke the, choke you, you know? Yeah. You'll probably have yeah. apoplexy when it's done. Yeah, right. But find out because that, I think that a lot of pastors get discouraged, and especially their families. Yeah. Because it, they're it, paid in a sub. So some church, yeah, some church, yeah. especially in our state, of course, um, might not have the wherewithal to take care of a pastor. Right. But. And I, I would understand it as a candidate if I came there and I had to take one for the team and I've done that. Yeah, me too. For but sure. if you know if I'm coming to you and you, your idea is that you're going to keep uh, me humble by keeping me poor, poor right? Uh, you know, you're disobeying God. Yeah, yeah I've had churches like you that. Know, workman yeah. is worthy of his hire, and it says you know a one who labors well in the word of God is worth double honor, double honorarium. That's, that's pay. Double pay. So really, yeah. you take the average income of the church and double it. Right. I mean, yeah, if you're going to yeah. take that literally, I mean, that's what the I'm Bible not, says. That's I'm what the asking. Bible says, and that would right, choke right. a lot of people. But it's and, and exactly so, what it says. And so, yeah, and so you know, you would think, well, you know, you go to a fast food restaurant, and uh, what does the manager make? Yeah, well, he makes twenty four bucks an hour, yeah, or, and right. he's a kid. Yeah, that's right. that's <laughs> you know, true. and he, he he's just a shift manager you know, of a fast food. Churches don't appreciate. Uh, you know, I think oh, the guy gets up or talks one day a week, you know, what or twice uh-huh. a week. They don't appreciate. That, that a pastor, oftentimes, if he's doing his job, he seldom gets a day off. He might, he might. Oh yeah, because it, it's like having children. Yeah, like yeah, like if you're yeah. a mother, do you are you really away from your children on a weekend I, get away with your husband? Right. I got no. the place. I couldn't go to the bathroom without the phone ringing. Right. I mean, and I told my kid, I joke with my kids one day. I said, I'm gonna make the phone ring. Went in the bathroom, the phone rang. <laughs> you know, and it. But you never get a. You never. You almost never get a day off. Yeah, a, a pure day off. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can grab. You're always dealing with so many. Or something. I can tell you how many yeah. times, like on yeah. a Monday, and it's fine. I want people to call me. Yep. And it's funny because people hear me on Sunday, and then they think about me on Monday, yeah. and yeah. that's my day. Yeah. <laughs> I've changed but, clothes up to five times in one day. Yeah. I've had a wedding and a funeral on the same day. Yeah. You know me that's too. that's me tough. Too. You know. Yeah. But okay, so you don't get a you very seldom get a real day off. Right. Uh, I don't know how many vacations I've had to cut short for a funeral, right? So many seen, or, or some major crisis in the church. We had an elk trip planned to Montana. Um, Brother Sergoing, remember the Sergoing? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They were going to go. Yep. Uh, Jay and his dad, mm-hmm. and um, I remember there was a death in the church. We had to cancel that trip, and yep. that, you know, I was my my father's a pastor, but oh yeah, yeah. Pastor Trav and his wife were just going to go to Cancun, I think it was, and his brother is in the hospital. They had to cancel the trip. Right. But that's that's a family thing. But that happens with the church all the time. Yes. A pastor never gets a holiday off. There's always something big going on at church big, at Christmas big or plans Easter. for or, Easter, big plans right. for Christmas. Picnic or I'm always whatever. I'm always thankful when Christmas is over, like the candlelight service <laughs> no, and the, no, uh, the no. oh, thank you. But then God. you got something New Year's Eve. Right, you know, you gotta, yeah, New Year's party so, coming and, up. And I think that's one reason pastors lose their kids. Is because the kids can't enjoy the time with their dad 
with these special times right. either. And, yeah. And I'm just saying, I'm not sure what the fix is for that, but I'm right. saying the congregation ought to be aware of it. Yes. Yes. And, that, that, you know, um, yes. The, you know, the, the, the 24 hour sacrifice, it's really a, like a business owner yep. where the whole thing is over your head at yep. all times. Yep. When I was assistant pastor, like going on vacation, is like checking out. I'm, mm-hmm. you know, I don't have. To, I'm not worried about a thing. Right. And then, like, you know, if somebody has a hard question for me. You're gonna have to ask Pastor That's about true. that. Nice. Um, <laughs> and and then I remember when I was working shift work, which was even more like that. Like, you know, I go clock into the grocery store and I was meat cutter six years, and man, I'd I'd work my tail off for yeah. eight hours, and yeah. then at the end of the eight hours, I'd slide my card back through. And I never thought about the place right. again to like right. clock back in the next day. Right. They, they, you know, I, but when you're a pastor, it's, um, what do they say about mothers, uh, son to son of mother's work is never done. <laughs> right, right. And Paul yeah. said we were yeah. like unto you as, as mothers. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You know, and it's, I don't think a church really, you know, churches will judge their pastor based on snapshots. You know, they see the they see the guy out knocking doors. Oh, our pastor's a real soul winner. <laughs> they'll they'll see him at the park with his kids. All he does is play with his kids all day. You know, they see yeah. these snapshots and then they make judgments about the pastor, and that's not really fair. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I know some churches we expect you to be in the office from this time to this time and, and, and all this. Well, what if he is up all night in the hospital with somebody? Right. And you expect him to be in the office, you know, from nine to five Monday. Right. If he was all night Sunday night in the hospital, and there's everything, dying. and there's everything from errands around the building to right. you know you have right. a whole building to manage to really to take care of, and uh, you've got little, almost even if you have a secretary, a secretarial stuff, and mm-hmm. uh, you know th- th- this person's calling, this person's dropping in, they just have right. to be by the you know, right. and that's going yeah. on yeah. at all times, right. and uh, yeah, it's just it's just a twenty four seven thing. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing. It is, and, it and is. I remember you and I were at an ordination, and one guy. We were ordaining this fella, and one guy started talking to the guy like, "Why do you want this?" I know, yeah. Like, he he started talking about how terrible the yeah, ministry I, is. I straightened right him now. out, <laughs> and you did. I was really proud of you. You piped like right it. up, defended. Uh, yeah, and I, it's wonder. There's nothing like it in the world. I've gotten bolder. Yeah, <laughs> because I, yeah. maybe it comes with age. Yeah, but you know, I don't. I don't like it. Just uh, there's so much nonsense out there. You know that. There needs to be some gracious. I mean, the ministry, I've had some rough spots in the ministry. Sure. And you know, and I'm scarred by them. Sure. But I had many, 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 many great years in the ministry, mm-hmm. you know? And it's a privilege to serve the Lord as a pastor. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's an Nothing like it in the world. Right. It's called the right. blessed bondage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, blessed bondage. That's, that's true. It is, yeah, you that's know. That's true. That's true. It's the blessed ball and chain, man. Yeah, being, yeah. A, being a pastor yeah. and having sheep to tend to. And, I, yeah, yeah, I can't imagine life without it. And, you know, Spurgeon said, if you can if you can step down to be king from being a pastor, go right. ahead and do it. Right, right. <laughs> you right. know, like he's not going to step yeah. down to be the king. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah that's good. So, yeah. I can't think of anything else. Well, I'm, that's good. I appreciate we can go eat another cupcake. Yeah. Yes, sir. Hey, thanks for being on. Okay. Where, where can people get a hold of you? Tell, uh, tell the folks what you do. I Prom- do well, insurance. Oh, I, insurance. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. We own the Craig Agency. Yeah. And God has blessed it tremendously. Uh, we own our own office building. We have seven employees. And uh, we do just about anything in church. We're, we're in, quoting. In church insurance. Yeah, we do a lot of church. We have dozens of churches. And you can save insurance. your money. We can, can save you, you money. Can, can you work out outside the state of New York? No, not okay. No, so no. it's only for New Yorkers, right? Right. Folks. right. The thing, the thing about it is, let's let's say, this is going to sound selfish. Okay, maybe mm-hmm. it is, but let's say, uh, you know, we've got like four different companies that on Shore Church, but let's say we can't put you in a better position. You know, let's say we can match what you've got. Well, we are we tithe, and our business, you know, gives the the God's work. Amen. And so, I think Christians, all things being equal, how to I ought to work with Christians. Right. Because that money's going. I had, I had one guy. And besides this, people say, ah, I don't care about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I care about saving money on my insurance. Yeah. You're you're able to save. I know we've, we've gone through you, saved money through you, and yeah. um, both churches I pastored went through you, and yeah. it was a, it was 
far cheaper than yep. like Church Mutual and other yep. places. And uh, and I, I felt you know it's way more personal. Oh yeah. Anytime I had to call you about something, my, about my, you talk my, to your wife. And, yep. She yeah. knows pastors and churches, and she's been in the you know ministry one way or another all of her life. And yeah, we've had pastors to use her, for instance, uh, which is a good thing. It, one pastor called and said, uh, "Can uh, you know can a twelve year old start the car in the winter out in the parking <laughs> lot? You know, uh-huh. is that a and and." You know, technically they can, I guess. I don't know what the law is, but as far as insurance, yeah. if he drives it into the side of the building, you're covered. But she said what she would say to the pastor, wink, wink, nod, nod. Tell him your insurance agent doesn't think it's a good idea. Yeah, there you go. And so that puts a pastor off the hook. There you go. You know, and, and she can be the bad guy. Right. And that's, you yeah. know what? That is, she I would think that'd be a good tool for pastors. It is. And if it, you had to say yeah. no to somebody about anything, say, you know, our insurance on person, Sunday. <laughs> our insurance lady said, right. that's not a good idea. Right. Right. See? <laughs> yeah. And, and that's, I get you off the hook. I mean, yeah. we, we want to be laborers together. Right. With the churches and, and we've helped, we have saved, I do financial seminars. Okay. And you asked me what I do. That's one of the main things I love mm-hmm. to do. Mm-hmm. And I, we have saved Christians, I'm sure, a million dollars and uh, and prepared them, you know, getting their wills done, uh, getting them out of debt, credit card debt. Mm-hmm. I had one guy, I, I sat down with him at his home and worked with him. And uh, a few years later, uh, I was at a funeral, and this guy comes bounding out of his truck at me, a big guy too, I'm not that big, and I can't run or fight like I used to. And I didn't know, it's like a dog, you know, you don't know which end to believe, the <laughs> starling or the wagging of the tail. Yeah. And I didn't know if he's going to punch me or kiss me. Yeah. And he said, Pastor Craig, Pastor Craig, in six weeks, I think it was, I'll be totally debt free. And that that's just awesome. made me feel great. You that's, know? that's awesome. Uh, uh, there's yeah, enough you, money you, in you, our you, pews to do whatever we need to do. Right. Oh, yeah. But absolutely. the problem is it's going to credit card debt, you know. So that's one thing I do. Yeah. I do grief and Sundays. You, 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 you've you done know? that. Um, you've never done a grief Sunday here. But no. you have done the financial yep. weekend, and we did yep. a session on Saturday, yep. and then continued that on Sunday, stewardship and it was Sunday. a stewardship Sunday. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I don't That's know why great. more pastors don't do it. Yeah. It'll help your church financially. Oh, absolutely. Know? Everybody's yep. looking for a pot of gold somewhere. Yeah, exactly. It ain't coming. Exactly. And, and like you said, you've got plenty of money coming in. And you know how many people are, are, are deceived? Uh, let's say, I know one lady when I was working for Mutual of Omaha. Uh, she had five life insurance policies, and she passed away. You know how many of them paid? Zero. You know why? Because they were all accident policies, and she died of cancer <laughs> or something. See? And people think they have what they oh, need, but no, they need yeah. somebody like me to look oh, at what they've yeah, got. Yeah, oversee it. See? Check everything. I have a guy right now I'm working on. Uh, he has a, a term life policy, and he doesn't need it, and it's the term is up. And I've got a company now that's looking to buy it, buy that policy. He may get $25,000 from it. I had another uh, lady and her husband come to my home, and she said, I think we're a contingent beneficiary in this life policy. They didn't know what to do. And I said, well, the beneficiary would really get the money. Well, they died before the owner of the policy died, so we're the contingent. I said, no, that's true. What do we do? Let's call the company. You know what? We got them some money. Yeah. And there's, you know, I, I, we need to put money in God's people's pockets. Right. So that they can bless the church. Yeah. And I, I ask. You'll save your people a lot of problems, too. I think, yeah. isn't it uh, finance is about the number one uh, well, uh, marriage problem, too? Uh, no, uh, it's number two. <laughs> number one is who controls the remote control on the TV. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but no, it is. It's like the, you yeah. know, number one problem. And, you know, I'm glad to sit down with people and try to help them with it. Yeah. You know, so yeah, that's I, one of the main things I do is Medicare and Medicaid, you yeah. know, plans with the insurance. And so, yeah. so, so, um, if someone wants you in to preach, how do they find you? Uh, then just call me, call you 585-545-8398, craigagency.com. Okay. And go to craigagency.com. Put that number on all the telemarketing lists. Yeah. Too. I don't care. You know, it's just, <laughs> I, my phone says potential spam. They don't get picked up. That's right. Leave yeah. a message. You yeah. Know. But um, yeah, that's good. And the rest of you yeah. go to pastorjack.org and sign up for the blog, and uh, hopefully that'll be a blessing to you. And uh, thanks for being on today. Hey, my privilege. Thank you it, for having that me. That was a fun time. I enjoyed, I enjoyed it. it very I enjoyed much. It. All right, we'll okay. end there. God bless. 
Thank you so much for watching or listening to the Pastoral Thoughts Podcast. And we'd love to hear from you. Please reach out to us at pastorthoughtsmail at gmail.com. Also, if you want to check out more uh, about our ministry here, you can visit pastorjack.org. I do have a blog that I do write. I'd love to have you as one of my subscribers there. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.